How do they do it? How do they do it? How does Nintendo manage to surprise the heck out of us over and over again with innovation, creativity, and maybe a little craziness? Regardless of how you feel about the final product, the end result, if you think there's too much hype surrounding the big end, if you get a little weirded out by the nostalgia that their hardcore fans display, you cannot argue with the fact that Nintendo knows how to generate excitement, enthusiasm, and fun. They are the best in the business at it, and today was just another example of exactly that. What's going on everybody? It's Ghost Robo, and we're talking Nintendo Labo. <sighs> this thing is so cool. At first blush, I feel like you fall in one of two camps. You're like, dude, this is awesome. It is so forward thinking. It's combining so many elements from current and, and recent trends and, and doing them in a new way that only Nintendo could. Or you're like, this is overpriced cardboard and I do not want to be seen with this gimmick. And it is targeted at a younger audience. So I could see how some would feel that way. But if we look a little deeper, this is real magic. And there's a reason why Nintendo is my favorite company of all time. So if you didn't see already, Nintendo Labo is basically a game for Switch that also includes these cool cardboard creations that you will construct yourself and then insert the Joy-Con and sometimes the Switch 2 in order to have a new gameplay experience. So they've got little RC cars that you'll put the Joy-Con in and use the vibration, the rumble, to power as you steer with the Switch touchpad. They've got a piano that will take both the Joy-Con and the Switch itself in order to make music. They've got a fishing rod where you'll insert the Joy-Con, set the Switch up in vertical tabletop mode, and then cast away to try and get the most exotic catch. They've also got motorcycle handbars, they've got a house, and they've got a freaking giant robot suit. These are being sold in two separate packs, one that includes the smaller Toy-Con, as they're being called. Get it? It's like a, it's like a riff on Joy-Con, now Toy-Con. The smaller ones, like said uh, fishing rod, and the RC cars, and the house, and the motorcycles. And then they have a bigger pack for 80 that is a deeper experience with just that giant robot suit. And these aren't just like cardboard, like, hey, build a hat, I've got a freaking hook arm. They have like moving pieces, you can rotate the cardboard, they've got these like special strings, you're like attaching things to your feet. It's really, really creative and really cool. And the trailer to me sold the idea, even though I'm not the target demographic. This is for kids ages six to 12, that is not me. I'm double that and then some. But they stand true to a, a motto that I've loved since I was little. And I think it's I think it's why Nintendo is my favorite company of all time. And that is, Reggie said, at the core of everything we do, the goal is to make people smile. And I think that's beautiful. From a personal level, I think that's beautiful that we still have companies out there, that's their goal. And sure, they wanna make money and you could look at this and say it's, it's overpriced cardboard and they're just trying to milk more dollars out of the excited Switch user base. But consider for a second how awesome this really is. They are taking ideas from recent and current tech trends, incorporating them into Labo in a very unique and maybe even extraordinary way. The first and most obvious is VR and AR. That's kind of the new hotness still. People are very amazed when they play VR. People are super amazed when they play AR. I got to do that cool Star Wars AR down in Orlando, Florida, and that blew me away. I wish it was longer, I wish it was more in depth, but being in a Star Wars world, walking around a physical space, shooting stormtroopers with a physical gun, and then knocking them out in the game as they used heat and cold, and they used uh, moving platforms and doorways. It was really impressive. That stuff still, it's like a mind-blowing moment for people. VR, for some as well, who haven't got to experience the Vive or the Oculus or, or any of those, they put it on, they're like, holy freaking crap. Nintendo Labo does not have a headset. It does not have a screen. But what it is doing is replicating that concept of you being a part of the game, of you being a, a, a moving piece of the game puzzle and getting to do a specific action far more fluidly and far more immersively than you would with a controller. And you're still using the controllers because they're all powered by the Joy-Con and the Switch system, but you're now holding a fishing rod. We saw some sneak peeks at upcoming Toy-Con that one was a camera, one was a pump action shotgun. That's really cool. Now, where I think Nintendo has been super smart is by letting some of this stuff play out and finding a way to almost one-up it. Another aspect uh, that is incorporated into Labo is from the fad known as Toys to Life. For the most part, those are all dead now. They were super successful for a hot minute, maybe even a hot year, maybe even a couple hot years. Skylanders, Disney Infinity, you could even say Amiibo, though the strategy behind Amiibo was more of a collector's item than a game piece, I think. And Skylanders became very collectible, but alas, there were tons of games that utilized them. 
Those were all about taking a physical object and shoving it in the game. That's a very novel concept. Once it's done many, many times, that novelty wears off and now the figure in your hand is merely a code to access a character in the game. So Nintendo saw this play out, and even though I still wish they would make an amiibo game, I think given their, their characters, it would work super well, they could do something very fun, it wouldn't have to be this big adventure, it could be more of a Mario Party style minigame collection, or some sort of Nintendo Land crossover of, of the different worlds, and, and the Zeldas, and the Marios, and the Donkey Kongs, and the freaking Bayonettas, and all the different series they've got going on, Animal Crossing, it would be epic. But I think they were really smart to kind of go the inverse here. And I'm going to be bold and deem what Labo is doing here to be called imaginative reality. So it's not virtual reality, it's not augmented reality, but it's imaginative reality because what Nintendo Labo is doing is bringing the game out of the screen to you. Now you are the robot, now you are the fisherman, now you are the cameraman, now you are the pianist, now you are the one popping and pushing the house to make the silly creature do what you want him to do. It is bringing the physicality of the game world out of the screen to you, and it is merging the imaginative play of yesteryear with the technology and the gaming of 2018. That idea right there took a whole lot of brainstorming, a ton of brain power, and a lot of brain smarts. I think it has a chance to be super, super successful. Because you're tapping into what, across the ages, kids love to do which is pretend to be cool stuff and pretend to do cool stuff. Imagine a pack in the future where you get to be a doctor or you get to be a giant dinosaur or you get to be a superhero or you get to be the man that controls the digger truck. These are things that right now don't appeal to me, don't appeal to you, but for a young child would be absolutely awesome. And the fact that there is a physicality to it, that they get to put on the robot backpack, that they get to put on the robot boots, that they get to put on and hold the control stick for the digger truck. That is so cool. And now you are living and breathing the game in a way that you could argue is more immersive than virtual or augmented reality. I love that they're doing this. I love that they're also incorporating customization because I feel like that brings in a whole different kind of person. The fact that you can make these your own. And, and that goes across multiple levels. They are selling a pack for $10 that has stickers and stencils. You can just use your own markers and crayons from at home. Or you could be crazy and create your own cardboard creations. Nintendo has said that they will be providing the designs, the patterns, for free. So you can make them yourself if you don't want to buy the pack. You will still need the cartridge, so you're probably going to get them anyway. Now the really cool thing here is if any sort of modding community develops around Nintendo Labo, you could have people who are taking that pump action light gun shotgun and converting it into an M16 via their own cardboard creation. You could have people that are taking the basic fishing rod from Toy-Con Pack 1 and converting it into this crazy space age fishing rod. You could basically manufacture your own imaginative reality that fits the game, but created by you for you. And to a lot of people be like, whatever, I don't wanna put stickers on my freaking RC car, I just wanna drive it around, or maybe I don't even wanna do that. But there is a subset of people, right, that are gonna love this. And if Nintendo finds monetary success with the initial launch on April 20th, they then will have the opportunity to dive far further, to release this adventure type pack with a bird and a camera and a freaking steering wheel and pedals. If that works with any kind of precision, boom, game changer. Now you don't have to go buy a $150 wheel and, and, and pedal, you can use theirs. And it's not gonna be the same, I know that. It's not gonna be as hardcore, but you're opening up so many possibilities and so many opportunities at a much cheaper price and to a younger demographic. And I remember I got to interview Miyamoto a couple of years back and he is very big on kids exploring, kids playing. Uh, classically, in my memory, he even said kids getting into fights. He's very big on world experiences. And I feel like this is almost acknowledging that kids of today are so zoned into screens, to phones, to tablets. And yes, they're going to be. The Switch is one of those two. But Nintendo wants to try and make it the best way possible to incorporate things of the past with things of the future and take care of those wonderful minds filled with imagination, filled with ideas, filled with energy that children have. So yeah, you still get the cool Switch. You can go play Mario. But then you could also customize and create your own robot suit to be a robot in our Nintendo game. That's magic, baby. And it makes me just appreciate what they do so much because I don't think anyone else in the industry is on this wavelength. I don't think anyone else is thinking like this. 
imaginative reality. I hope it works. I cannot wait to get my hands on it. I know there's some upcoming events. Hopefully I can find my way there and let you know how it actually plays because if it doesn't work well, if it, you know, if it's really boring, then I'm gonna take this all down a few levels. But right now, the few people who have played it say it's really cool. It looks to be a new, completely innovative style of how to experience and play games. Kimishima promised us new ways to play. And boy, oh boy, was this brand new. Who predicted it? Nobody. That is super cool. In today's day and age, when everything is either leaked or so darn rote and routine, seeing something come out of nowhere, you get that trailer where cardboard is coming down the conveyor belt and you're like, what have they done this time? We have no idea. They've made imaginative reality. And I think it's pretty darn cool. Let me know your take in the comments down below, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. I love you. I hope you're doing well. It's been fun making videos again. Can't wait to make more. Like I said, gameplay is coming soon. So if you're not into the whole discussion-based stuff, that's okay. I got you covered. But to those who are, thanks for participating. Thanks for being a part of the community. I love you. So, so glad to be back. Make sure you have a fantastic day. Make sure to drink so much chocolate. Make sure you know that I love you a lot. And until next time, thanks again. We will see you all later.